What is up everyone? Okay, today we're doing a video I have been so excited to make for about a month now. We're gonna try a bunch of my favorite YouTubers 2022 yearly favorites. <laughs> I'm so excited. I think I've done a video like this once or twice in the past. I don't, like I know I've done it at least once, but I'm excited to do it again. I really do wanna make this a yearly occurrence because I mean, I like maybe you, I watch YouTube, right? Well, I mean, I know if you're watching this, you're probably currently on YouTube. You might be on Facebook watching. I don't know, wherever you watch. Actually, comment below where you watch. Wait, no, that wouldn't work because if you're on, <laughs> never mind. I'm just saying I also upload these videos to Facebook and some people just watch over there. That was my point. Okay. Anyways, but I watch other beauty YouTubers, video creators, and I'm constantly influenced right? Like I'm constantly influenced. I'm always adding things to carts or adding it to my wish list, etc. These are all things that I added to my cart slash wish list after watching all of these YouTubers favorites. So I was like, let's do a full face out of it. How fun. We're going to see if they live up to the hype. I hope they do. <laughs> so we have almost enough for a full face, just about. So I'm excited. So I have a foundation to start with, but I also have this under eye primer. Let's start with this, I think. So this is one of the recommendations from Taylor Wynn. I have two. We're also going to try the sponge she recommended, which we'll talk about in a sec. So this is called the Revolution Line Fix Under Eye Primer. She was saying that this was sold out for a long time and that um, it's just one of those products that actually says it does something and it does it. She was saying it makes the under eyes totally like unbelievably smooth. And that concealer really does sit differently on top of it. I don't know how much to use. So we're just gonna kind of give it a whirl. Feel, it has the feeling of like a, kind of like a pore filling primer. You know what I mean? Where it's almost silicone-y, but still different. It actually, it doesn't have that same exact feel now that I'm feeling it some more. So, I mean, that's with and without. It, it, it is like, I don't know. It feels interesting. I'll be excited to try concealer over this, uh, see what it looks like. I'm sure this is like a little bit goes a long way kind of scenario. She did mention too, and of course I'll link all of the YouTubers I'm mentioning uh, below with the product that they recommended. So if you wanna check out their channels, maybe you want some new YouTuber ideas of people to watch. She did say that um, she had been traveling when she filmed this particular video and that she was excited to be reunited with this product, which was somewhere else. So anyway, so that tells you it's probably pretty darn good. So we're gonna see, I'm gonna leave it alone. Let's put on our foundation. Maybe I'll start with the concealer. See, this is what I'm saying, I don't know, but it would have felt weird to put that on top of the foundation, but I always end up getting foundation in this area. You know what I mean? So do I just do the concealer first? So the foundation and concealer we're using actually are from the same line. I kind of made that work here because there were two of my favorite YouTubers that both recommended each one, but I really have been wanting to try both. So I'm like, well, we'll just try them together. So let's start with the concealer just so we can really hone in on this. So this is the Dior Forever Skin Correct. This baby is pricey, as is the foundation from this line. It is a glass jar. This is one of the few high-end, I was just trying to pretend like I didn't just spit on myself. Just wipe it off clandestinely. <laughs> this is one of the few concealers, like high-end, where it, the packaging actually feels high-end. You know what I mean? I feel like generally, a lot of the things you get at Sephora, the packaging feels awfully similar to the stuff you, that you just get at the drugstore. So it's nice that at least if you're gonna pay the price point, it does feel a little more high quality. I guessed on the shades. I really, I almost erred on the side of too dark versus too light. Um, so I got two CR. Ooh, it's a bigger doe foot. I think it's gonna be a little, oh, that might work. We're gonna see. So I'm just gonna put a little bit. The one thing, oh, I didn't say, this YouTuber, it was Jamie Page that recommended this. She said this is one of those super creamy kinds of concealers, you know? So I'm gonna do my finger. This might actually be a decent shade match. Not too terribly light, you know, but light enough to make it, I think I even that, it is creamy. It's spreading out really easily, so I could have definitely used less. <laughs> I'm a terrible scientist. What I should have done is done the concealer on one side with the Revolution stuff and one without. So we are gonna wipe off the Revolution stuff on this side and we're just gonna see without it, what does this concealer look like? Because that's really what I wanna know. Like, does it actually make a difference in the way that the concealer looks if you've got like lines on your under eyes, wrinkles, crow's feet, like all of the things, you know? So that's what this concealer, that was really easy to blend in. 
A lot of times I feel like concealers can be hard to blend in with your fingers. Like it'll look really splotchy sometimes. This is definitely one that blended in really, really nicely. I'm gonna do a little bit less because I think that will be plenty. I can link this um, nail polish color. I know I'm gonna get questions just as I see it in the viewfinder. I'll link the exact color. I got like a chrome powder on top and it's a dipped powder, but they do sell the like base color of this in just a nail polish too. So if you like really did wanna try to do it at home. Do you see it? So with and without, it definitely does something. I feel, I'm trying to make sure I'm not just like seeing what I wanna see. So with that Revolution Line Fix and without, same concealer, same application process. I think it really does. Like, I mean, obviously you're still seeing my fine lines. Like that just is what it is. But I really do feel like it's doing a little something. I'm gonna keep trying this. You let me know what you're seeing on the screen. Have you tried this? Do you notice a difference? Let's get that conversation going because this is not very expensive. Revolution is a very lovely brand. I have a lot of favorites from and it's usually more inexpensive. And if this works, even if it helps 50%, you know what I mean, of the concealer to just sit and look a little bit nicer, that's pretty exciting. So, awesome. Digging the concealer so far. So I would say Jamie is correct on this. Taylor, I hope, is correct on that. I mean, like I said, it's looking really nice. And there's the part of me that wants to be like, yeah, that, but that's an extra step. Like, you know, that step would, in theory, just go and apply it really fast, would take 10 seconds. And if it's gonna really help things sit a little bit nicer, that's pretty cool. So. Moving along, so this next one was recommended by Julia Adams. This is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. So in this one, I got two, did I get two CR in both? Yeah. Smart thinking, Jess. I don't even know that I did that on purpose. <laughs> Would make sense too. So I'm excited to try this. And then I also got this two pack of Taylor Wynn's Sponge Favorite. So this one, Amazon, it, it has a flat side. And she and I tend to like similar sponges generally. So I was, I was kind of excited. I do feel like there are different kinds of sponges for different people. Like some people love the Beauty Blender and some people hate it. Like, do you know what I mean? Anyway, it's super flat on this side. So she was saying she likes to apply foundation with the flat side. And I think she was saying she uses it dry. I did wet this a bit, but I really wrung it out. So it's like not very wet at all which is typically how I like my sponge. So we're gonna try it that way. And with the foundation, I've just heard it's just beautiful on the skin, you know, it's just one of those products that like, it's just pretty. So we're gonna see, I'm so excited. Okay. First of all, it looks freaking beautiful. I almost hate this cause it's expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I bought it, it's mine now, baby. I want to like it, but it is expensive. But you guys, I mean, the only thing I had on my face, by the way, um, previously was the Say Sun Visor SPF 35. I'm just trying it out. It's kind of glowy, but I did I put a very thin layer because I didn't want it to be like wildly glowy, and I put it on earlier, so it's sunken. Okay. Point is, I also may be a convert. This side, I mean, you saw how easy that was to blend in, and again, these are super inexpensive, and it's just got a wider area. So you're able to cover more quickly, you know what I mean? And it's easier to like drag it down the neck, you know, if you don't want that like line of foundation. Okay, I think this is a good shade match too. It's always hard to tell in this lighting because what I'm seeing in the mirror is different than what, you know, what with the light on and with, I don't know, I just feel like it always looks slightly different. And sometimes in person, a shade match will be horrendous and on camera it'll look okay. And you guys will be like, perfect shade match. But I'm like, oh no, if you saw that in person, it was awful, you know? <laughs> this foundation has a scent. I can tell you that right now. It definitely has a scent. So if you are sensitive to that, this would not be one. I, I would steer away from this one if you are. But I am just like, what? This looks so pretty on the skin, oh my gosh. And it definitely has some more coverage, right? Like I feel like it's covering a good amount. So today, it, it's winter of course when I'm filming this, at least where I live. It's such a gray day, which you know, I feel like winter is just a series of gray days connected by a very random sunny day. <laughs> and you know, it can kind of get you down. It's just like, oh man. But at least on days when there's like a little bit of a snow flurry, it feels so much better because at least you're like, oh yeah, it's winter. Like, oh, how nice are these snowflakes? Like that's so pleasant, even when it's super gray out. And so that was the day we've had today. It was like somewhat snowy. And so it made, it makes it a little more bearable when there's like a pretty snow falling. Anyway, I've got all these theories on winter. I think it makes sense. Okay, so I am loving, loving this foundation and the way that my skin looks. So definitely skin glow. I feel like it did let my skin, like like I said, I feel like it still looks like skin. 
it still looks like skin. That's huge, but it did have a good amount of coverage. It covered everything I, I would want to cover. Um, of course, that's a personal preference type thing, but loving this. I feel like if you're near my shade, if you were to see this shade in person, actually, you can even see it. It is a little bit dark for me, I think. Not, I don't know that like it's so dark that I wouldn't wear it. Like I'm, but I might consider either trying to lighten it myself or like looking at a lighter shade. So, I mean, that's really just for you if you're near my shade, but, but I feel like concealer color 2CR was good. So, wow, this is very exciting. <laughs> so I don't have an eyeshadow product to use, uh, which I know is kind of surprising. I did feel like as a general rule with eyeshadow this past year, I feel like a lot of the YouTubers I watch and that would be myself included, not that I watch myself, but you know, that it felt like it was not a year of eyeshadow. Like there were plenty of things that came out and plenty of like good products, but it just didn't seem to be the sole focus for a lot of people. And again, myself included, I found myself just using like single shadows and stuff. So what I wanna do is use this. This is the House Labs bronzer. This was a recommendation from Andrea Renee. I love her channel. The vibe of her channel, and I, I don't know how to explain it. You have to watch one of her videos, but the vibe of her channel is one of my favorites because it truly feels like you're sitting down and talking to a friend. And it, every time I have her on, it, I just smile. Like she'll say something, it just makes me smile. So if you need someone that just feels like you're in the same room as someone, she she's a good one. But anyway, she recommended this bronzer. She said it was so like velvety and gorgeous on. And we have similar tastes in bronzer. She loves the NARS cream bronzer, just like I do. So I'm like, uh, we're bronzer, bronzer twins. So anyway, I'm excited to give this a try. I got the shade light level one. Did I even tell you what it was? This is the House Labs Power Sculpt velvet bronzer the packaging is kind of interesting it's got like this kind of rubbery feeling cover but then it's like shiny on this side it does feel like really nice packaging it's got a nice magnetic close again it feels high-end so i want to try this she said she uses that as an eyeshadow as well so we're gonna do the same this is like an easy this might be well but honestly i was like it's definitely a lighter bronzer color which is what i was hoping for on me it's gonna look like a very i feel like clean girl type eyeshadow where it, it, you can tell I'm wearing eyeshadow, but it, it just looks really put together and nice. And this formula's feeling, it is feeling very velvety. I wish you guys could feel the way this feels. It almost feels like you're rubbing your finger on a velvet blanket. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, that foundation from earlier definitely has a smell. I can still smell it. I had to <laughs> make sure it wasn't the bronzer. I'm like, no, nah, it can't be. Yeah, just a super easy eye look, that's perfect. Oh, and let me throw something in my brows too. I just now realized I haven't really done that. Elf wow brow always. So the liner, we'll get back to obviously using the bronzer here in a minute. The liner we're gonna use is from Melt. It is the Slick Waterline Eye Pencil. This is one recommended by Stephanie Rose. And she actually had um, one that was like a apricot color and she used it in her lower waterline to brighten the eyes and she was saying that you know versus using a white one under the eyes it's so stark that that apricot one was a really nice kind of off-white color that looked really really good and it stayed really well in the waterline so i was like hmm i'm not looking for that right now but i am looking for a brown eyeliner that works really well in the waterline but i use it on the upper right and i'm trying to make sure it doesn't transfer down so we're gonna try it out so I think this is the first thing I've ever bought from Melt Cosmetics. Just an interesting factoid. And by the way, thank you to all of you. I bought this um, one size little Mickey puff and I was trying to use it this way and a lot of you guys are like, Jessica. <laughs> like, duh. So thank you. Oh baby, it is so creamy. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like offensively creamy. So I'm gonna put it in my upper waterline. So we're just gonna see if that transfers down at any point, you know? We're currently, my husband and I like together are listening when we drive places and the kids aren't in the car, which is rare, but <laughs> like but like today, driving to the workspace, um, we were listening to Matthew Perry's book. <sighs> wow. I don't even know, like we're maybe 70% of the way through it now. It starts off pretty strong, but then it, it kind of scales back and it, it is wildly interesting to hear how he dealt with um, his issues. We're not gonna get deeply into this here, but how he dealt with his issues while still working and like, you know, filming for friends and doing movies. I'm like, it, it is wild. If you have any interest in him or friends or just the issues he talks about, I, I would recommend it, but it's not like, 
it's it's just crazy i don't know oh man anyway okay so there's definitely an initial like drop down <laughs> of liner i don't mind wiping that away the first time it's really does it do it a bunch of subsequent times looks like it's doing it a little bit more i don't want to write it off right away so we're gonna but i will say this this is wildly creamy and again this isn't what she was technically recommending she was recommending it for a different it was in the waterline but it was on the lower and it's a little bit different so keep you that in mind but she is not wrong this is a wildly creamy liner and actually i'm wondering i might take just kind of like a flat brush here and just see how creamy this baby really is just kind of smudge it a bit you know love a good smudged line yeah that smudged really easily which i love like that kind of undone almost look like it's not so harsh wow okay yeah this is this is really uh oh getting a little too big for my britches here this is really easy to to do this with because it is so creamy so just keep in mind if you're looking for that kind of liner that you want to be able to manipulate and kind of work with you can definitely do that with this definitely let's check in with the concealer shall we i feel like again this this side still does look a little bit better than this side doesn't it maybe i'm seeing things but i feel like it does becca sun is the youtuber that recommended the tower 28 well okay she was the first one i saw um in the yearly favorites and then i saw many others that just love this freaking mascara i have heard more about this mascara it's truly unreal so this is the tower 28 make waves mascara i've been wanting to i think people said it was a tubing one i wanted to look that up really fast okay the reviews this mascara is it i promise you like everyone um i cannot wait so the brush is interesting they were saying it's like a triple something or other it doesn't really look like it though so yeah the wand is kind of curved people are like claiming like it is a game changer okay i have to say <sighs> I mean, that is the fluttery lashes of my dreams. Oh my gosh. Y'all just watched that in real time, right? Like that? Holy moly. <laughs> and Becca was saying that you can build it up too. So like you can put one coat on and it, you can still totally build it up more if you want, which is always nice to have the option. Um, Cause you know, there's some mascaras that dry down and once they dry down, man, you are not manipulating those lashes anymore with more, you know what I mean? Cause they're so crunchy but supposedly you can build with this one which i'm not even sure that i would need to but it's nice to have the option wow all right let's try to add on more yeah they're definitely still soft and pliable this is one of the prettiest mascaras i've ever applied and i found a lot of favorites recently that i should say that i have found a lot of favorites recently in the mascara world but this is one that has been so hyped up that you know mentally i'm like i mean can it be that good I mean, I have no notes. I have no notes. This is absolutely gorgeous. So um, yeah, I think Becca was right. And every other one that I've heard recommend this, I'm so excited to have finally tried it. Oh my gosh. And I know I'm gonna be asked how it compares to some of my favorites. Give me some time. I'll get back to you on like, how would I rank this? Is this better than the few that I've fallen in love with recently? I mean, it's up there. So let me let me play with it a few more days and get back to you on that question. I need to throw on a little bit of um, powder before I do um, the bronzer. I wanna powder my under eyes just a bit because I feel like they need it. This is just the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Powder amazes me sometimes, you know? Um, and actually I might swipe a little of that just up here because I feel like it just looks like uneven. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect. I'm just gonna put this in my like bronzer zones because I don't want this powder bronzer to just stick to a certain area of the skin you know what I mean without but I don't want to put the powder everywhere because we're using a liquid blush <laughs> okay so house labs bronzer back to that we're gonna just see what happens here baby using the BK Beauty 103 gosh if you need new brushes I just love so many of these I don't know how much is gonna go on so let me I didn't love the way this applied with this brush let me try it with a slightly different one and just see like maybe one that's a little denser um, which I don't usually want for bronzer but I think I'd rather be more particular about where I place this because yeah this is definitely a smooth powder and I think it just looks a little bit better in this case by like instead of a fluffier brush using a more densely packed this is the 101 with this oh my gosh that looks really pretty oh I just feel like I've needed I have not fallen in love with a powder bronzer in a minute. Just feel like none of them are really standing out versus each other, you know what I mean? Like they just all kind of seem similar, but this one actually does seem softer than a lot of the ones I've tried recently. And I think Andrea 
said it perfectly. It's very velvety. I mean, I guess that is in the name, but it is very velvety. We are gonna try this. Kelly Gooch recommended this. It's the Revolution Super Dewy Liquid Blush. I just guessed on a shade. You got me blushing. Is that the actual shade name? If that's not the shade name, I'll put the shade I bought down below if you're curious. Um, I was swatching this earlier, so it's a squeezy tube. And this is the same brand, by the way, as the Line Fix that we tried on our under eye. It definitely has a like moussier texture and it definitely kind of creates like almost a stain like quality. You see what I mean? So I'm, I'm very curious to put this on. Let me try it with my finger on this side. That's really pretty. Blend it in really easily. I definitely think you have to be someone that likes this kind of blush. If you don't, you know, I like a blush that's actually less pigmented than this because I'm a baby. I like one less pigmented than this because I don't want to have to think too, but, but even still I say that and that looks really nice. Like if you're, especially I like a like nice pinky blush that you can see that I, like I like to be able to see the blush especially if you're going a pink route, makes me think of spring. So I do think this is a really pretty product, but if you know yourself and you know you're not into moussey like liquid blushes, I don't think you'd like this, but if you do, I think you would. And I think that looks really nice. Kelly Gooch's blush literally always looks perfect. Always, and so does her hair. <laughs> so for lips, Mandy Leah recommended the LA Girl Ultimate Lip Intense Stay Auto Liner. I am so excited to try this because it looks unreal, and of course the price is amazing. It's super creamy. I like, it feels a little more like, luxurious is not quite the word for this, but it does feel like a nicer lip liner. It's got like a nice grip here, um, and of course it's retractable, and it does have the little shaper on the bottom if you want that. So I think this color, let me just kind of secretly check, should go well with the lipstick we're doing. Wow, like perfectly well, good job Jess. I just have been looking for a better price point lip liner that is very easy to apply. This shade, I know not everyone's into pink, is called Enduring Mauve. Definitely does, ha it's pink, but it does pull a little bit mauve, and that was so easy to apply. I totally, this is the only one I bought, but now having tried it, I will probably try a nude color too, because it feels really nice. So, oh yeah, and I was just trying to, I was pushing really hard to wipe it, and it's not budging, so. That's what you want a lip liner, baby. You don't want it to budge. Let's go back to this blush. I don't know, well, I was gonna say, it said it was a super dewy blush. I guess it is looking a little bit dewy, but to be honest, I expected it to be a little, in the application, almost like more emollient, and it wasn't. But I feel like that means it's probably gonna stay in place better, and it does kind of look dewy, even though it didn't feel dewy. This is an interesting product, but I, I love the finish it gives to the cheeks. Like, I don't feel like I need a highlighter on top of this, you know? So Amanda Z recommended this. This is the Bobbi Brown Crush Lip Color in Lilac. Well, I think she just recommended the lip line. I picked out the shade Lilac for myself. I wanna say I've tried something in their Crushed Lip line, but I don't think it was the lipstick. I think it was like one of their like glossy balm type things. This, again, looked like a color I don't have a lot of in my collection. It looks awfully similar to the lip liner, you know? But, it just feels really moisturizing, but thin. And I'm realizing, I, I like a thicker lipstick sometimes, depending on what it is. And I know that sounds weird, but I like to almost feel that it's on. <laughs> but I also can appreciate a thin one that still has a lot of color. So you don't feel like, especially if you're someone that doesn't like to feel it, you know? This color is so pretty. Again, I feel like it's kind of unique in my collection. I don't have a lot like this that it's just like a nice wearable pink can we just like pretend it's spring you know like at what point are we allowed to be like yep spring's basically here they've got the spring stuff out in stores so <laughs> guys we just tried so much and everything was so good so if i were to kind of comb back through this and be like okay if you were to try one or two things, I'll probably recommend three or four, but I mean, I would, I would genuinely recommend any of these that I tried today, but if just from this personal one-time first impressions experience, what would I say? Like right now, I would go ahead and recommend this to you. It would first off 100% be this mascara. I just, I love it. I, this is exactly, exactly what I always want my lashes to look like. So this, this foundation. 
right off the bat. I, I just love the finish. I love how easily it applied. I love the coverage level. Again, though, keep in mind it is scented. It's not a bad scent, you know what I mean? But if you are sensitive, stay far, far away. And I'm really enjoying the finish of this Bobbi Brown lipstick. Not just the finish, but the way it feels. It feels like a balm, but it looks like a lipstick. And yeah, I, I'm into that. Like this, this feels really nice. Everything else I really, really liked as well, but I just want to try more, like the bronzer, the line fix, the blush, concealer, etc. But those are definitely my top three. I'm trying to make sure, yeah, my top three winners of this. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Go check out all of the YouTubers I mentioned. They're all people I watch and like. Yeah, if you have any recommendations of products, either that you loved from the year 2022 or YouTubers that you loved last year that you're still watching, let us know below. We can kind of get a fun, YouTube recommendations, you know, people to watch conversation going down there. I think that'd be cool. And of course, if you are watching this video, maybe it's the first video of mine you've watched. Maybe you've watched a few and you're, you're like, I think I like her. I don't know if I want to take this to the next level. I would love to get to the next level with you. If you would subscribe, become a subscriber of my channel. It is totally free. And that just means you'll get to see my videos in your subscription feed on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, give it a like. I think that's what you do on there. And then you'll see my videos more often, you know? Anyway, I love you guys so much. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.